Today we're in Coventry, a city steeped in history and vibrant culture, yet the city is often overlooked. From the city's remarkable ruins to its pulsating music scene, to being chosen as the UK City of Culture in 2021, we're here to uncover this underrated gem. We're starting our day right here at the Coventry Transport Museum. We've come across a few motor museums in the UK, but this one seems massive in comparison. And I understand why. Coventry is considered the motor city of the UK. So it definitely makes sense. We got Carl's Jr. with us, so we're gonna take turns going inside. that before making cars, they were a bicycle city. They manufactured a lot of bicycles here. And penny farthers. Apparently they even made a record of 1,369 cycles in one day in 1905. And motorcycles too. It seems like if you needed a mode of transportation of any kind, Coventry, that's where you got it where they made it. There are all kinds of cars here I've never even heard of, but they are pretty neat looking. That back end almost looks like the predecessor to a Volkswagen. I don't know if you can tell, but this car is massive and apparently it was Queen Mary's car. I don't know if that gives you an idea of just like how giant it is. creepy in here. Oh my god, please don't have a jump scare. Okay, seems okay. I don't know why I thought there was going to be a jump scare. <laughs> Singer like the sewing machine? I didn't realize they made cars at one point. I mean, it looks like the Singer logo. How interesting. This section is talking about how up until the 50s, more than 50% of exports were British and that people came from all over the place to work in Coventry at the car factories because of the good wages that they had here. I guess in the 50s is when the US stopped uh, importing as many cars from Britain and started building their own cars over in Britain. And so that kind of was the the demise or the decline of the booming industry that was here in Coventry. Wow, look at these Jaguars. Jag Jaguar, I forget how you say it over here. A Jaguar. The Thrust 2, which is the world land speed record holder. Connected to the museum is a cafe called Baxter's Baristas. Kara found that the coffee shop here had Coventry God Cakes, which are a puff pastry filled with like a mince filling. And the story behind them is that godparents would make them for the christening of their godchildren. Okay, dig in. Looks good. That's pretty nice. I feel like we've had mince pies before and they give me very Christmassy holiday vibes, which this still does, but yeah, it's pretty nice. Looks like a mince pie, but in a puff pastry form, yeah. huh? We tried mince pies and they weren't my favorite. These are kind of like a mince pie, but better. I, I really, really like this. It just, the filling is really nice. Maybe that's what sets it apart. And the pastry is just like a nice flaky puff pastry. Definitely, if you want to try them, because they are a local thing, you probably should come here, because this is the only place I could find online that sells them, and uh, they're, they're pretty tasty. In the heart of the city center, you have St. Mary's Guild Hall, Coventry Cathedral ruins, and the ruins of the great medieval Benedictine Priory Cathedral, which are all very significant landmarks in the city's layered history. This right here was the site of the original cathedral in Coventry. Established in the 12th century, it was one of the most important religious structures during the Middle Ages. Those ruins were destroyed after Reformation, and according to the sign right here, it was the only cathedral in England to be deliberately destroyed. 
The ruins of Old St. Michael's Cathedral, now commonly referred to as the Coventry Cathedral, dates back to the 14th century and stands as a poignant symbol of the destruction of war and the resilience of the city. Coventry was one of the most bombed cities in the UK and the most heavy bombings occurred in one night in November in 1940, what's commonly referred to as the Coventry Blitz. And in that blitz, this cathedral um, and much of the city center was just demolished and in rubble. The bombing was devastating. It caused massive destruction, loss of life, and extensive damage to a lot of the historic buildings in the city center. I read online that they made this cross out of the destruction the day after the Coventry Blitz. Not only was Coventry an epicenter of manufacturing, but I think one of the reasons that they chose it is because up until that time, Coventry was considered the most preserved medieval city in all of Europe. Instead of rebuilding the cathedral, the city of Coventry decided to, you know, basically leave the ruins as they are as a reminder of the resilience of the city. There seems to be some contention uh, from people about the way that Coventry has handled their historic buildings, but I think that there is something truly beautiful about the fact that you can come here, see these ruins, you can see the actual like shards of glass left in the stained glass windows. It's just magnificent. And then almost touching it, they built a new cathedral right next to the old ruins. There's the ruins and here's where the, the new cathedral build is started. There is something poetic about the fact that they have this area where you can come and pay your specs and have a tribute to the past while also having this connection to the future and this sense of like renewal. I think it's really neat. It's very different. There are over 20 points of interest here on the cathedral grounds between the ruins and the new cathedral. Uh, one of them being that these are considered the Queen's Stairs because when the Queen visited in I think the 50s, this is uh, where she walked through and came down into the, the new cathedral. Constructed in the 14th century, St. Mary's Guildhall is supposed to be one of the best preserved guild halls in all of England. It's really unfortunate that it is closed today for a private function because it is supposed to have some of the most beautiful, intricate woodwork and stained glass in all of the country. It also has a couple notable things uh, with its history. One being that Mary, Queen of Scots, uh, was held here under house arrest during the 16th century. And it's also believed that William Shakespeare held a play here. Um, but that one I think is just uh, not confirmed. This looks like we could have a fancy afternoon tea if we wanted to though. It does look fancy. Got a little misty outside, so we made our way into the castle grounds, which was recommended to us by one of our viewers that we met, Paul, so thank you. And we both got burgers and they look really good. We normally try to mix it up by getting different things, but I think this angry hash that has Frank's Red Hot and a hash brown patty just seemed like the perfect combo for both of us. Yep, so we both got it. <laughs> and I got the angry fries, which look like they have like pickled onions on them. And look at these big pieces of stilton on there. And I like that they just put a big old patty of Stilton on there. Chunk of Stilton. <laughs> you put Stilton on something and I'm going to probably be excited about it. I am a big fan of chunky chips here in the UK, but man, these are some of the best skinny fries that I think we've had here too. God, this is so big. There is just something about the, the patty that just gives it like such a good classic burger taste. Yeah. This is one of the best burgers that we've had here. Just just a, a good burger, great food. Yeah, we've had some fancier ones while we were here that were also very good, but there's something about Yeah, this just one just has like a classic vibe that's just perfect. Yeah. <laughs> really great food, really friendly staff, and a very impressive selection of gin. Apparently they also do a gin of the month club. So if you're local, that could be a fun thing, which I would be interested in. <laughs> Anyway, let's go explore a little bit more of the city. <laughs> I 
I love that Coventry has embraced the story of Lady Godiva, who, uh, according to legend, was a noblewoman in the 11th century, whose husband, being a very powerful noble in the area, was heavily taxing the people of Coventry, and she kept asking for him to stop. And basically, he finally agreed on one condition, that she rode through the streets of Coventry naked. And she did just that. Allegedly. <laughs> While the historical accuracy of Lady Godiva seems to be pretty heavily debated, the powerful symbol of social justice and the fight of oppression seems to be just very ingrained in the cultural fabric here in Coventry. Also, 10 out of 10 would recommend being here on the hour for the Lady Godiva peeping Tom clock show. <laughs> it's only mostly weird and creepy. that Coventry Market is a staple of the city. And I can see why. This indoor market that first opened in 1958 is pretty massive and it has over 170 stalls. They have everything from fresh produce, meat and fish to clothing, antiques, collectibles, all kinds of stuff. I'm not sure if it's because we're here towards the end of the day. It's only open for another 40 minutes or so. Um, or if there are just some of the booths closed right now, but there's still quite a bit to see, even in this little gap of time that we have. The good time snacks. Asian Lay's. Do you need cucumber? Interesting. Or even odder to me, Asian chip, but Mexican chicken tomato. All right. I'm intrigued by jackfruit chips. We didn't get anything this time, but they have a lot of stuff in there and we could probably come back and find things to make a pretty good dinner here. I agree. We've made our way to Spawn Street and oh, what a delightful gem this street is. I mean, just look at these beautifully preserved half timbered buildings. Not only is this one of the oldest streets in Coventry, but it has played a significant role in the industrial part of Coventry because a lot of the people, the craftspeople, from weavers to watchmakers uh, had housing here. I like that you can learn all about Spawn Street from all the information all around the street. Earlier, Jeremy pointed out some pavers in the ground that said, true, it's Coventry blue. And I didn't realize that that is because uh, the dyes that they used to use actually made the river blue. And that is where the saying comes from. Good to know. <laughs> we popped in for a pint to the old windmill. According to the sign outside, this is the country's oldest and best known pub. I didn't know about it. That doesn't mean the rest of the country does. It's a really lovely pub in here. There's all these little different rooms and like nooks and crannies. Like, there's a nice fireplace. There's like some weird dips and waves in the ceiling, which I can appreciate. I like it. What a great way to end our first full day here today. Spawn Street is definitely worth a visit. It truly feels like you're traveling back in time. I mean, aside from the cars on the street. Tomorrow, we have another full fun day, and I'm very excited about some of the things that we have planned tomorrow, and we're supposed to have a lot better weather. We won't be dodging any rain. So we'll see you then. <laughs> Coventry is significant in the ska music scene. So we have come here to the Coventry Music Museum, which showcases the city's robust musical history beyond ska. Uh, it encapsulates all kinds of genres and apparently has all kinds of memorabilia inside. So I'm very excited to check it out. I like that they have these records on the outside showing some of the famous musicians from Coventry. Even got to sit in the actual car from the specials video Ghost Town, which is pretty amazing that they have it in here. <laughs> what did you think? It was really cool that it was such a big collection of sort of everything, especially the two-tone stuff and the big singles collection from the specials. It was all really cool. One thing that I thought was very fascinating, especially, was Delia 
Derbyshire. She was, uh, or is considered a pioneer of electronic music. She made the Doctor Who theme song and she's from Coventry and I never knew that. That's amazing. <laughs> I learned so much in there that I keep thinking of things that I learned and I'm like, yeah, that was amazing. Um, Chuck Berry, the song My Dingling, was recorded here in Coventry. And uh, one of the gentlemen, it was a volunteer, said that he was there at the performance and that you can hear like people cheering in the background and that he's one of them. So that's so neat. Amazing. I just, I loved it. I loved all the volunteers and everyone was so kind and so passionate about music that it made the experience even better. I think it's definitely worth the five pounds. They do only take cash though, so keep that in mind when you're coming. Just make sure you bring cash. We've come to the nearby Fargo Village. This former industrial space is now home to a very creative community full of local shops, food vendors, and so much more. They have all kinds of choices here, but we opted today for the Bib Noodle Bar. Uh, we both got their spicy hand-pulled noodles. Uh, did you get pork too? I got beef. Oh, I got pork. Let's dig in. Oh, they're so beautiful. <laughs> they smell really good. They have a little bit of spice. They just have a really good flavor. The pork is really nice. They've got like a nice fresh spinach with them. These are pretty much perfect. <laughs> they're really good. Having tasted both of them, I think maybe your pork ones are slightly better, but they're both really good. And we also got us an order of their dumplings and they are some of the best dumplings I've ever had. They're wonderful. That was really good. The dumplings were a surprise. Thought they were great, loved it. If you would like to see us try a lot more food here, then make sure that you check out our entire video about the food at Fargo Village. We'll leave a link up above and in the description. But for now, I think we're just gonna have a relaxing stroll and check out some of the vendors and shops here. Here in the market hall, I guess they sometimes do craft vendor markets and things like that, so that's pretty neat. There's a bunch of really interesting looking vintage stores here. There's a board game place, a comic book store, and an amazing looking record store. If you are a fan of Sergeant Bilko, then you definitely have to stop here at the Phil Silver's Archival Museum. Um, I had to admit to uh, the person that runs it, Steve, that I have never actually watched an episode of Sergeant Bilko. It's just not something that we had on our Nick at Night when we were younger. And so he pulled us in and said, come on, let me show you. And he showed us all about it. It's a really cool little museum full of all kinds of uh, artifacts and men memorabilia. So definitely recommend checking it out. He's also got a cool collection of like comics and pop culture things too. I think Fargo Village was a hit for all of us. They even have this sign that says, good food, good vibes, good people. I would agree with all of that. We have one more stop for today and I'm very excited about it because one of you guys, a viewer of ours, recommended it. So we'll see you on the other side of town. Earlston is a vibrant and trendy suburb here in Coventry. What was once a watchmaking hub in the 19th century, it is now a blend of historic and modern charm and apparently beloved by locals, which is why we're here. Uh, a viewer, Paul, stopped us when we were on the train coming into town and gave us some recommendations. And he told us to check out Earlsden and Beer Gonzo. So that's what we're here to do. Gosh, they have one called Limp Biscoff. <laughs> Whoa, oh man, it even has Wes on it. Great. <laughs> this place has a huge selection of craft beers from uh, not just locally, but international, all kinds of selection. Uh, and not just beer, they have ciders, they have wines, they even have hot sauces, including my favorite one called Payne's World. <laughs> but yeah, it's almost overwhelming. There's so many choices, but because they have things on draft, I opted for the Vault City Love Hearts Session Sour. I love a good sour, and sometimes they're kind of hard to find here in the UK. So the fact that they had so many uh, available to try. Yep. Pleasant. Love it. Mine is also a Vault City Sour, but was not on tap. It is a strawberry rhubarb cheesecake. It smells amazing. It smells strawberry rhubarb. It's 
It's so good. It's moved on to a stout. I did. It's a double chocolate, double vanilla, raspberry filled birthday cake stout. So it's got a lot going on. Ooh, wow. The gentleman that helped me with it said it was a dessert in a glass, and he is not wrong. It's good, but it is really strong. <laughs> A say, stout I like. I was gonna say, I bet you don't won't hate that one. I don't hate it. It's pretty it's pretty good. I don't love stouts, but that one's that one's nice. <laughs> I got a blackberry sour and it's lovely. Okay. Well, those were pretty great, as you can see. That is such a lovely place. Just very relaxed, chill atmosphere. So many amazing options to choose from that it was hard to choose just to <laughs> but yeah I, I i'm glad that we went there thank you so much paul for the recommendation and also he recommended the uh, castle grounds that we went to yesterday so thank you that was great <laughs> I mentioned it before but Coventry is also a very pedestrian friendly city. It is just covered in all kinds of walking paths, roads that are shut off from cars that are just for pedestrians and I appreciate that. I hope that if you live in Coventry or the surrounding area that we've given you some inspiration to uh, do something interesting and unique here in Coventry and if you've never been to Coventry I hope that we've changed your mind about any uh, preconceptions that you have and that you definitely put this place on your list of places to visit because there is so much to see and do here and the people are fantastic when they say that this is the UK city of culture I believe it because the, the, the culture of the people and how proud they are in their city uh, just pours out in every place that we go and it's fantastic the people here are great Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to our patrons for supporting our channel. If you wanna see our next video where we stay in a gatehouse right here in Coventry, that's now an Airbnb, make sure you click that link. We'll see you soon.